Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. So we are here on Ultimate 106.9 FM and um, Captain Isaac all the way in the United States of America, uh, specifically uh, in Dallas, is here with us and he's going to teach us on uh, who exactly is saved and whether salvation is for all mankind. Uh, we go to our various churches and we are told that at the end of the day, uh, salvation is for everybody. So whether or not it is true, we will get to know about it today. So I quickly would uh, welcome Captain Isaac on today's addiction. Shalom, Captain. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful for your coming on the show. And as usual, we always have a very good interruption with you. All your teachings has been very insightful and really, really uh, helping us. Then. I have a very special listener of you and uh, he's by name, Mr. Andrew Frimpon. He never misses your session of teaching and he says you are really teaching us the truth which shall set us free wow so welcome to today's edition all praises all praises to the most high uh, uh all praises to the listeners those of you who are tuning in now please have your pens and paper ready call into the show later on with your questions uh today we're going to be going over a very uh important and interesting topic um a topic that have been misconstrued throughout um, society and different teachings in the churches and schools that the Bible's an all-inclusive book and Christ died for all nations and all nations can be saved. And um, this is a real interesting topic, reason being because it, it, it branches off of white supremacy. White supremacy teaches you that Christ, which is a white man, came and died for all nations. Basically, when a white man says that, he's saying that he can be forgiven for everything that he has done to the so-called black man under the sun and still make the kingdom of heaven. That is not so. You're going to find out today that you've been lied to. You're going to find out today that the Bible is not an all-inclusive book and that Jesus to Christ just died for the nation of Israel. And only, only the nation of Israel shall be saved, those who repent. I want to start in the New Testament. I would like to start with the book of Revelation, chapter 21. We're going to start from the new and we're going to work our way to the Old Testament. OK, so we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And I would like to start at verse 10. Soldier Ashbel, you're reading for me? Yes, sir. All right. Let's start at Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 10. What are we about to read? We're about to read about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city. That the great city is the kingdom of heaven called Jerusalem. Go ahead. The holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Come on. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone, most precious even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall, great and high. And so had this kingdom of heaven, now is talking about the infrastructure. It says this kingdom of heaven had a wall, great and high. Go ahead. And had 12 gates. 12 beautiful gates that you see. You know how you'll drive by a nice cornerstone house and it'll have a gate? And some of us will just marvel at how this gate looks. Guess what? God is saying the kingdom of heaven, the 12 gates are, are a trillion times much more better than any gates that we've seen in front of any mansion, in front of any house. God says this gate was 12 gates. Pay attention to the numbers that it's using. 12 gates. Go ahead. And at the gates, 12 angels. 
12 angels, black angels, like you read about in Ezekiel, the first chapter, 12 big black angels. Come on. And the names written thereon. Which what names are written thereon? Are we going to read Caucasian? Are we going to read um, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Arab? What names are written on, the, on these 12 gates? Come on. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You hear that? The names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Go ahead. On the east, three gates. So there was three gates on the oh, east. That's Benjamin. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Come on. On the north, three gates. On the north, you had Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon. Come on. On the south, three gates. Zebulon, Gad, Reuben. Come on. And on the west, three gates. Asher, Issachar, Naphtali. Last time I checked, three times four equals 12. So that's talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's what the kingdom of heaven is talking about. Go ahead. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Read on. And, and in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The 12 apostles of the Lamb is talking about the disciples. The 12, the 12 apostles of the Lamb. You don't hear, you don't, you don't read about the Ammonites. You don't read about the Hamites. You don't read about the Moabites, the Ishmaelites, the Edomites. Okay. And by the way, the Edomites is the so-called white man. I believe in Ghana. Some of you might refer to him as Mazungu. That's like my new favorite word now. Mazungu. Okay. Mazungu is not getting saved. <laughs> Mazungu is not going to be dwelling in Jerusalem. Okay. That is not happening. That is nowhere in the Bible. Now go to Revelation, um, Soldier Ashbel, and get me Revelation chapter 7 and start at verse 3. The book of Re chapter 7 and verse 3. The book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I heard the number now, of now, them. Now it's going to explain who are the servants of God that God said is going to be sealed in their foreheads. Meaning the commandments of God is going to be in their mind. Go ahead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand. 144,000. These are the leaders of each tribe. Go ahead. Let's see what tribe they were from. Come on. Of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the children of Israel. I mean, how plain can you get? The Bible is so plain, but we make things difficult. Why? Because we've been so brainwashed in our minds. And the affinity that we have for the other nations, we could not see ourselves surviving without the other nations. We've developed such a dependency on the so-called white man, okay? The Bible says the 12 tribes of Israel. Brothers and sisters, it's time to cut that umbilical cord that ties you to the so-called white man. Cut it off, God says. God is supposed to be our father, not Mazungu. Go ahead. Verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah, we're still 12,000. Of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. That's the American blacks and the Negroes that are scattered in Africa. You are the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Reuben, that's the Seminole, the Seminole Indians. They were sealed 12,000. Read on. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Who's Gad? The Native American Indians, 12,000s. And you have a small portion of them still remaining in Africa today. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. The Native Indians of slave descent from Colomb Colombia all the way to Uruguay, also known as the Incas. Guess what? They were sealed 12,000. A small portion of them is still on the continent of Africa, scattered. Come on. 
of the tribe of Nathalem were sealed 12,000. From Argentina to Chile is the tribe of Nathalem. Okay, remnants of them are still on the continent, scattered abroad. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Manassas were sealed 12,000. Who's Manasseh today? The Cuban. The Cubans. God says they shall be sealed 12,000. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Who is Simeon? The Dominicans. The Dominicans of slave descent. They are going to be sealed 12,000. Read on. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. Those are the Haitian Negroes, the Haitian Blacks. God says 12,000 of them are going to be sealed. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. That's your Mexicans today. Your Mexicans of slave descent. Mexicans of Negroid descent. Mexicans of Aztec descent. Guess what? God said they're going to be sealed 12,000. Come on. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Guatemala to Panama. We also know them as the Mayans. God says they're going to be sealed 12,000. Read on. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. They're known as Ephraim today, the so-called Puerto Ricans of Negroid and Native Indian descent. Guess what? They're going to be sealed 12,000. Read. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. And we could never forget about Benjamin, our young brother Benjamin. That's the Jamaican blacks, the West Indian blacks, Negroes. God says they're going to be sealed 12,000. Read. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations. Why does he say the great multitude which no man could number of all nations? Because we were scattered amongst all nations. And I'm going to explain that in a second. Read on. Of all nations mm -hmm. and kindreds mm -hmm. and people and tongues mm -hmm. stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Get me Deuteronomy chapter 28. Why does it say of all nations? I've seen people of all nations because a lot of times we'll read that. Everything will be about Israel in its proper context. But as soon as we get to words like all nations or whosoever, we automatically want to include the so-called white man in that. And notice the brainwashing that, our, that has been done to our people. Whenever you hear all nations, who's the first person that the so-called black, black man asks if they could be saved? Ultimate the white man. They never say the Chinese man. They never say the Japanese man or the Arab man. The first person that they mention is Mazungu, Esau, the white man. That's how you know we've been so brainwashed. We have been so brainwashed. Okay, go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. You hear that? All people translates to all nations. We were scattered everywhere. Look at this map. What are we looking at? The transatlantic slave trade. Three million went to Europe. 4.5 went to the West Indian. Five million went to America. Right? Two million went to Central America. Ten million went to South America. Then we had remnants of us that remained on the continent of Africa, which was colonized. And then pre previous oh, oh, to this right current then. captivity called the transatlantic slave trade, we had the sub-Saharan slave trade where they took us from Mozambique, Tanzania, Somalia, Madagascar. What did they bring us? They brought us to Yemen, Saudi Arabia, India. That's where you get the Dalits and the Sidis in India. They brought us off the um, all the little islands of the seas, which we're going to read about shortly. OK, so when you go back to Revelation and you read about all people in all nations, it's because we were scattered in all nations. It doesn't mean God is going to save all nations. That's not in the Bible. Get me Isaiah chapter 11. Verse 11. It's time to wake up, black man. It is time to wake up. Remove your heads from the deep 
recesses and corners of Christianity, man. It's keeping us lost. It's keeping us divided. We'll never come back to realize who we are and the great responsibility that we have of keeping the commandments as long as you think you're Gentiles when you're not the Gentiles. That's how this whole world is upside down. You calling yourselves Gentiles and the real gen Gentiles, the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites, they calling themselves you. They're walking around with your identity, calling themselves the Jews when they are not the Jews. Give me Isaiah 11 verse 11. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11. Oh. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, mm -hmm. which shall be left from Assyria. From, from Assyria. We have Israelites in Assyria that were scattered in Assyria. Guess what? The bloodline, the seed line, the seed line of Israel is still there. Remember, northern kingdom was carried away by Salamanasseh. Okay? And the rest of the Assyrian kings. Ultimate okay? Ending. And they got absorbed into that captivity. Guess what? The bloodline is still over there. The, the remnant, the seed of Israel is still over there in Assyria to this very day. Read on. And from Egypt. And from Egypt. Where is Egypt? Africa. Okay? And those people that you see in Egypt today, those are not the original inhabitants of that land. Those Arabs. The original Egyptians were dark-skinned. They were hermetic Africans. Okay? They were not Arabs. God said the seed of Israel is in Egypt until this very day. Read on. And from Pathros. And from Pathros. Come on. And from Cush. And from Cush. And from Cush. Where's Cush? Ethiopia. Read on. And from Elam. Elam. I mentioned before this about the Sidis and the Dalits. That's Elam. Elam is India. We have Israelites scattered in India that will be saved if they repent. Read on. And from Shinar. Babylon. Shinar is Babylon. Okay. Modern, um, not modern day Babylon. Ancient Babylon was Iraq. Go ahead. And from Hamath. And from Hamath. Come on. And from the islands of the sea. Men remember I mentioned about the islands of the sea before. Okay. You have islands of, of the sea right off the coast of the Indian Ocean. And you also have the West Indian Islands, the islands of the sea. Guess what? The remnants of Israel is there. God was not joking when he put that curse on us in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 64th verse. God said we shall truly be scattered amongst all nations. And guess what? Not only did God say that, Christ said that. Let me show you. Let's go to the book of Matthews, the 28th chapter. Let's get the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's go to Matthew's 28th. And I want to hear what Christ told us before he went up. I want Matthew 20, uh, 28, verse 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why did Christ say Go ye therefore and teach all nations because we were scattered amongst all nations because Christ knew the prophecies. Christ was a master of the law. Christ was the law himself. Christ was the, the law in the flesh walking. He knew every single verse in the Bible. It was in his DNA ever since he was created. Christ said, guess what? You shall be scattered amongst all nations. That's why he said, go ye and teach all nations. Read on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father Ultimate and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. What is that making reference to when it says baptizing them? Who is the them that must be baptized by the word of God? The them is making reference to those same Israelites that were scattered. Those same Israelites that were scattered amongst all nations, God, Christ said, go and baptize them. Teach them about me. Teach them about the laws of God. Teach them about repentance. It's the same thing we're doing right now. It's the same thing we're doing right now on this radio show. The laws of God has come to Ghana. 
the truth of the Bible has been revealed to the Ghanaians that they are the Israelites and they got to repent before Christ makes his second coming and they shall be saved. Get me Luke, the first chapter. Luke, the first chapter. Because many of you say, who shall be saved? Or many of you might say, you're already saved. You're not saved yet. You're absolutely not saved yet. Get me Luke chapter 1, verse 68. The book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of who? Of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Not blessed be the Lord God of Esau. Blessed be the Lord God of Ishmael. God said he rejected them. They are not children of the promise. So where do we get all nations from? Mazungu has played a great trickery in your mind. You have been bewitched. The white man has bewitched you. There is no such thing as salvation for all nations. We just read it in the book of Revelations. We read about the kingdom of heaven, about the 12 gates. I didn't read about 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 gates. We read about 12 gates in the kingdom of heaven. Read. But he have visited and redeemed his people. Because he set Christ to die on the cross for the nation of Israel, to adopt them back to the covenant. Read on. And have raised up an horn of salvation. For us in the house of his servant, David. Has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. Who is that making reference to? Christ. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, mm -hmm. which have been since the world began. Which have been since the world began. Read on. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from who? From our enemies. If, if all nations could be saved, then how can we truly be saved from our enemies? If all nations are in the kingdom with us, how can we be saved from our enemies? That's not so. It's impossible. So you're telling me you're going to inherit the kingdom with the same people that lynched you, the same people that robbed you, the same people that raped you, the same people that murdered you, the same people that stole you? The same people that brainwashed you, the same people that kill you, the same people that shoot you, you got to be retarded. You have got to be a hundred percent, a thousand percent retarded if you think that you're going to be saved along with the same people that caused harm to you, the same people that taught you wrong. It's impossible. It is not biblical. It is not biblical. But because we've been lied to, because we've been bewitched as a people, you think that your enemies are going to be saved right along with you. You know why? Because you can't see yourself without your enemies. You can't see yourselves depending on your brother or sister who looks like you. You can't see yourself depending and leaning upon our Father, the Most High God. Okay? But the Bible says we can. The Bible says we can. Finish reading. And from the hand of all that hate us, and from the hand of all that hate us, all that hate us. Who's the all that hate us? All nations. All nations hate the children of Israel. You'll never get a, you'll never hear the Ishmaelite man, and they know who you are. They'll never come to you as a nation of people and say, you are the children of God. The whole earth belongs to you. You'll never hear the white man collectively as a nation of people say you are the children of Israel and we've been doing you wrong. You'll never hear them say that. It's, it's not in them, brothers and sisters. It, it is not in them. We are the children of God. The Most High is revealing it to us in these last days. And we must come back to the Bible. Get me James. Get me James. It says that we shall be saved from our enemies. Get me James Chapter 1, verse, you know what? No, I'm sorry. Before James 1 and 12, get me Matthew chapter 1. Get me Matthew chapter 1. Let me show you another purpose of Jesus Christ. I want Matthew 1, and I believe it's verse, one second, uh, verse 21. The book of Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. This is another purpose of Jesus Christ. Not only did Christ come to save us from our enemies, but he came to 
do something else. Read. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Come but on. He shall save his people from their sins. So what is the purpose of Christ? He shall save his, 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 his people from their sins. Who's the his people here? All you got to do if you're confused is start from Matthews chapter 1, verse 1. Read it. Verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then when you read that, when you read the whole lineage there, it's going from Abraham on down to the Israelites. So when it says it, they sh he, he shall save his people is making reference to the Israelites, the Jews. Who are they today? The so-called Negroes, the so-called Hispanics, the so-called Native Indians of slave descent. We make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Christ is only coming back to save you. But in order for you to be saved, what you have to do, you got to repent. Because those of you who do not repent, you will not be saved. And your fate will be the same fate as the white man. Death and destruction. Let's get James chapter 1 and verse 12. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the oh, man that endureth temptation. Who's the man that they're talking about? The Israelite man. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. That's trials, tribulations, afflictions. Things that God is going to put in your way to see what are you going to do? Are you going to lean back on the laws of God or are you going to fail the test miserably and turn your back on them? God says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Read on. But when he is tried, he but when he is tried, meaning when those trials come your way, come on. He shall receive the crown of life. Meaning when you were tried, you endured and you overcame. Whether it's until death or until Christ comes, whichever one comes first. God says, if you do that, you're going to receive the crown of life, not the thorns of life, the crowns of life, meaning you're going to get the kingdom of heaven. Read on. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. What is the love making reference to there? Keeping the commandments of God. Let's prove that. Give me John 14, verse 15. Come on. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. How simple is that? How simple is that? Many of you have been running around to and fro, hopping from church to church, religion to religion, opening your mouth and saying you love God, but you don't want to keep not one commandment. You don't want to keep not one commandment. When the laws of God come out, you frown. You, sh you stomp your feet. You close your ears. You suck your teeth. So you're not going to be saved. You are going to receive the same fate and destruction as Mazungu. Okay? You are going to die with the so-called white man if you don't repent. God oh, says, oh, what again? Read that again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments keep my commandments okay now i know some of you are still thinking that the other nations can be saved impossible get me the um the john 3 16 poster so everybody could see it and then soldier ashbell you get me isaiah 45 17 All right now look over here at this poster what do we have here? We have a whole bunch of different nations. Okay, the nations are referred to as world, a world of people. Like you have the Edomite world. That's the world of the Caucasians. You have the Hamite world. That's the world of the ancient um, Hermetic African nations. You have the Moabite world. You have different worlds. Then you have the world of the Jews. Okay? Get me Isaiah 45, verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Who shall be saved in the Lord? 
But Israel shall be saved in the Lord mm -hmm. with an everlasting salvation. Everlasting meaning eternal life. Come on. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So who's the world without end? Israel. Not Esau, not Moab, not Ammon, not the Philistines, not the Palestinians, not the Edomites, not the Ishmaelites, not the Japheth nations. No, it says Israel is the world without end. Now, the verse started off by saying Israel shall be saved in an everlasting salvation. Get me Acts chapter 5, and I want verse 31. So Israel is the world without end, brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters of Ghana, it is time to leave these churches. It is time to leave these churches. We're going home soon. Those of you who choose to remain in these Christian churches, in these apostle, aposto, whatever the hell they call it, I can't even pronounce it. All these crazy churches over there on the continent of Africa, guess what? Like I said before, you are not going to get the kingdom of God. Read on. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 31. Him have God exhorted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. Uh -huh. but repentance to Israel. Repentance to Israel only. Who is he a prince and a savior of? Israel only. Israel only. So the savior is the one that's going to be doing the saving. Who's the people that he's going to be doing the saving? I mean, who's going to be the saved? Read that verse again. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. To Israel. To Israel. Let that sink into your minds, brothers and sisters. To Israel. To Israel. I know it's, I know it's a hard thing to understand that the most powerful, the most talked about, the most omnipotent, the I'm um, the most I'm um, I'm um, omniscient or omniscient, however the hell you pronounce it. It's hard to fathom that the greatest man that ever walked this whole universe died only for you. I know it's hard. I know it's a hard thing. That's why we gotta deprogram our mind because we have such so so much low self worth and self esteem. We don't see that the greatest man ever. Was not only was he a black man, but he died for you, the nation of Israel, you Israelites. Ultimate I know it's a hard thing to understand, but surely we shall understand. Get me Jeremiah. Now, as promised, I said I was going to go into the Old Testament as well. I want Jeremiah chapter 23, and I want verse 6. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6. In his days... Judah shall be saved. And in what? In whose days? In his days. Judah Wait, start, shall at, start, at, start at verse 5. Come on. Verse 5. Behold, mm -hmm. the days come, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. A righteous branch. Why? Because he came from Nazareth. Go ahead. And a king shall reign and prosper. And a king shall, re shall reign and prosper. Come on. And shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Read on. In his days. In his. In his. In his I'll days. In the days. Who's the his? The his is making reference to Christ. In his days. Come on. Judah shall be saved. Judah shall be saved. Judah shall be saved. That'll, that's the, you Negroes over there in Ghana. You Ashanti, Israelites scattered in Ghana and scattered abroad. Come on. And Israel shall dwell safely. Go ahead. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness. Say la to that. Okay. Stay in the book of Jeremiah. Get me. 46 verse 27 let's get some more 46 verse 27 the book of jeremiah chapter 46 and verse 27 okay captain captain ultimate fm hello captain yes sir 
Yes, as we are getting ready to read the book of Jeremiah, I would quickly want to announce once again my test line. So if our listeners would want to test in and ask messages already, I'm having some few comments here on our Facebook page on Ultimate 106.9 FM and also on our WhatsApp console. But if you'd also want to test in and ask any question or make a submission, you just can call in, I mean, test in for now on 233 And again, we will be answering your calls also on the same number, 233 So you could please test in and ask your questions about if or not salvation is for everybody. And uh, we have Captain Isaac all the way from Dallas in the United States. So, Captain, please, you oh, can go ahead FM. with the Bible reading. I have yes, some sir. comments here. So, please, when you are done with them, I would kindly want to start reading the comments and the questions that are coming through. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. The book Jeremiah. of Jeremiah, chapter 46 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, mm -hmm. and be not dismayed, O Israel. Come on. But behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Real? And Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. You hear that? And none shall make him afraid. Now, this is Jeremiah when he was prophesying about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon. That was ancient Babylon. But guess what? The same thing goes for now. The same prophecy is used now. Okay? God said he's going to save us from modern day Babylon, the great, which I'll, is I'll the white man. Read verse 28. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith mm -hmm. the Lord, for I am with thee. Mm -hmm. I will make a full end of all the nations with I have driven thee. Damn, you hear what God is saying? Do you hear what God is saying to, to all you nationists, to all you uh, uh, Mazungu lovers? God says, I'm going to make a full end of all the nations with I have driven thee. Go ahead. But I will not make a full end of thee. God promised he's not going to make a full end of us. Why? Because one third of us, he's going to bring us through the fire. And then guess what? 144,000 leaders is going to be set up in the kingdom of heaven. Come on. But correct thee in measure. Yet mm -hmm. will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. Because two thirds is going to die. Two thirds of our people is not going to repent. Two thirds of our people, this sound good to them. It sound like a sweet, lovely music. But when it comes to applying and keeping the commandments, they don't want to do what's in the Bible. But they'll listen to it. They'll listen that. They'll listen to the fact that Mazungu, Esau, the white man, is the devil. They love that. They love the feast days. They love the the celebrations, the holy celebrations. They love that part. But when it comes to brother. Grow your beard. Brother, where's your fringes? Brother, stop committing adultery. Brother, stop eating bush meat. Stop eating pork. They don't want to do that. So God says, guess what? A lot of you is not going to go unpunished. Now, you had some questions, host? Yes, uh, yes, I do. I have some questions in here. And I would kindly want to announce the test line as well as the call number again. If you would want to test in and ask your questions as to whether or not we are all going to heaven or we are all going to be saved, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a topic that we are talking about. And we've heard Captain Isaac all the way from United States of America, as far as specifically Dallas. Please test in on 0233-144. One nine nine, and you can now call us also through that same number zero two three three one four four one nine nine. We've heard the biblical explanation as to whether or not we will all be saved, all mankind would be saved, and Captain Isaac has done justice to that. So, Captain, let me start with the messages coming through. This one is from Andy Kuluchi, and Andy Kuluchi says, Cut Christianity off. That is what he's standing in on the show. Um, Micah also sends in a message saying, the same way our forefathers couldn't see themselves without the Egyptians. 
I'm sure uh, he's siding ways with you that as we are not seeing ourselves uh, good enough without oh, the white, FN. and you call them uh, Muzungu. <laughs> Muzungu! Yes, as we are not seeing ourselves mm. without them to be superior, he's saying that that's the same way our forefathers couldn't see themselves without the Egyptians. And Andy Kuluichi also test in again saying, Christianity is worse than drugs for our people. Yes, it is. Have you, yes. um, have you ever heard about the crack epidemic in the 80s, how crack messed up the black yes. community? Yes, yes. Guess I... what? Christianity is worse than that. <laughs> Christianity is worse than that. Yes, Christianity and Andy is Kuluchi, worse than crack. Andy Kuluichi is siding with you. Another message coming through says, if only Israel would be saved, if only Israel would be saved, where will other nations go? So it's a question he's putting across or asking that if only Israel, which is we the blacks, will be mm -hmm. saved, where will other nations go? Oh, absolutely. That's a, that's a very great question. Oh, this is a question that your Christian pastor would never answer. But the Israelites, we're going to answer it according to the Bible. All right, Revelation chapter 13, and I want to start at verse 9. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. Go the ahead. book of Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, a majority of people on earth have ears, unless it was cut off or something happened to you at birth. So what is Christ talking about? Meaning, if you have understanding, understanding, if you have understanding, let him hear. Come on. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that leadeth with, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Who led you into captivity? Oh, yes. Mazungu. The Edomites. Esau, the Caucasian man, Mozungu. Yes, it is him. He's the one that puts you on these boats. You see the illustration? Here, look, matter of fact, there he is right there. There's two Mozungus right here in this picture. You have Mozungu number one on the horse, right? You have a servant sitting upon a horse. Then you have another one with a, a whip in his hand, Mozungu number two. Okay, God says, look at that. They're taking us into captivity. This is the perfect illustration. God says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Read it again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Read. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. You hear what Christ is telling you? First, he says, if you have understanding, let him hear. Those, it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Because a lot of you don't have understanding. A lot of you are still on this assimilation, integration, kumbaya, hold hands, rainbow coalition spirit, which is not in the Bible. It's not in there. It's nowhere in the Bible. It's nowhere in the Bible, but it's in your brain. Why? Because Mazungu put it there. After he colonized you, after he enslaved you, he put that thought in your mind. So you would look at him as a God and be so quick to forgive him for all the evil that he has done and he's continued to do until this very day. God says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Read on. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Guess what? Leopold ain't getting away. Look what he did to our brothers and sisters in the Congo. Cut off their hands if they did not come back with enough rubber. And not only him, but all of the Edomites along with him. All of the other Mazungu that was with him. Cut off their hands. Guess what? Leopold is going to be put to death in that day. He's going to be put to death. Okay? Christ ain't playing. Christ is not playing. And there's no bargaining with Christ. There's no reasoning with him. There's no excuses. You can't buy him out. You can't do nothing to our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Okay, look at this. Look at all the evil. These are the same people that you want saved with you, right? You bunch of simple ass people. Look at this. Look, the hands of black people. They, was, they cut off their hands. 
and they was forced to hold up the other hands of the people that did not come back with enough rubber. And then on top of that, to add um, injury to insult, or insult to injury, however the hell you say it, they took a picture. They took a picture and made mockery of our people. Go to Isaiah 14. So what was Christ quoting? What was Christ quoting? I want, uh, before you get uh, Isaiah 14, get me Exodus. Because remember, when Jesus Christ was on the scene, brothers and sisters, the New Testament was not written yet. That's why the Bible always says, as it is written, as it is written. Written where? You ever ask yourself that? For, for you people that denounce the Old Testament? When Christ says, as it is written, written where? Written in the Old Testament. That's what he was quoting. So let's see what Christ quoted. Um, Exodus 21, verse 16. The book of Exodus, chapter 21 and verse 16. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. You hear that? And he that stealeth a man. Were you stolen? Yes. Oh, ultimate at them. He that stealeth a man and selleth him. Were we sold? Were we sold? Yes. Look at this. Look at our sons and daughters that were stolen and sold. The Bible says he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, or we found in the white uh, in the hands of white people. Yes. Hand of the Edomites. Yes. We're still here in the land of our captivity where we were scattered. God says, I'm going to repeat it again. And he that stealeth a man and selleth a man. Where were we sold? Auctioning blocks. Nigga, nigga, nigga sold to Master Charles in Charleston, um, South Carolina. Nigga, nigga, nigga sold to Rabbi Horace in Charleston, South Carolina. Because guess what? The, the Jewish people was buying us too. And don't ever forget that. I'm going to read that part again. It says, and he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So this was what Christ was quoting. Now, to, to make it a little bit more specific, more detailed, let's read Isaiah chapter 14. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And the people shall take them. And so bring Jacob. Them the house of Israel is called Jacob. Jacob says we shall take them. Who's the them that we shall take? The strangers. Who's the strangers? The heathen. Who's the heathen? The other nations. All the other nations. Read on. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. That's and the house bring them to their place. Come on. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. You hear that? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? That song, that 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 song that keeps replaying in your mind, Mazungu. Mazungu. There'll be no more Mazungu. Mazungu is going into slavery. I hope you understand. Mazungu will be saved just for slavery. Read that part again. And the people. Come on. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. They're going to be servants and handmaids. Not only Esau, not only the so-called white man, but the Arabs. The Hamitic African nations, the Moabite, the Ammonite, all other nations are going to be servants and handmaids. And when the Bible says, and the people shall take I'll them and bring them to their place. place, that's not talking about Jerusalem. That's not talking about the city of Zion that we read about in the book of Revelation. Because when we read that, it said 12 gates and the names of the children of Israel was written. They're going to be outside. So Esau is going back to where God wants Esau to be, which is probably okay. going to be in the bottomless pit. Ammon, the, 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 the Japanese is going right back to where the Japanese belong. And we're going to have them as servants and handmaids. 
Let's finish verse two real quick before we answer another question. Read verse two real quick. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. God says we're going to rule over our oppressors, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, host. Okay. So, yeah. Nana, I'm sure as you're listening, you have well been answered. And uh, it is, uh, we are here with the Israel United in Christ. And, uh, Captain, there is a follow-up question that, that says, in your submissions, oh, you said how possible would it be that we will be in the same safe place with the people who oppressed us, with the people who did us wrong. But the Bible says that... Um, when someone repents of his or her sins and announces that he has taken Jesus Christ as his personal savior, that person's sin will be forgiven and will be accepted back into the kingdom of God. A typical example is the prodigal son. He took all his father's money that he could, went outside the country, squandered all the money, but when he came back, the father forgave him and took him back as a son, but not as a slave. The prodigal son is making reference to the northern kingdom of Israel, those that were scattered abroad. That is not talking about all nations. Once again, that is Mazungu. Mazungu, the Edomite man in your mind. You just can't, you can't, you can't let go of that thing. You will find uh, every single happen. scripture to twist to try to save the white man. That is not talking about Esau. Okay. When it says when a man can repent, let's read that again. Let's read that again. And then, and then I want um, the definition of sin. Get me Acts chapter 5, verse 31 again. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. The book Man, of come on. This is some serious witchcraft going on in this world. Acts chapter 5 and verse 31. Mm -hmm. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, but to give repentance to Israel. So first and foremost, the repentance is for Israel. The word re in the word repentance means to go back. Go back to what? Remember, the laws of God was given to who? Let's get that. Psalms 147 verse 19. Remember, we are the ones who broke the laws of God. But who was the law given to? Because we're going to read the definition of sin after this as well. Okay, go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Come on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise and, the Lord. And for his judgments... They have not known them. So the laws of God was only given to the children of Israel. So who can sin? The children of Israel. That's who repentance is for. What is so hard to understand? We've been brainwashed. We've been so brainwashed. Brothers and sisters, you must acknowledge that you have enemies. You must acknowledge that we are the Israelites. You must repent and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of only Israel. Let okay. me show, let, let me, let me get one more scripture real quick. Get me Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. This is what's going to happen to all you Edomite lovers, you Mazungu lovers, you Caucasian lovers. You cannot see yourself surviving without the white man. Every single scripture that says all us and everybody, you want to include all nations. Read this. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image. You worship the beast. Who's the beast? Making reference to Esau, the Caucasian race. You worship the beast in your religion, in your ideologies. And you worship his image. What is his image? Right here on the screen. Look at this. Some of you are melting right now. Some of you are crying right now just because of this image. Some of you are on your knees right now. Get off your knees, Ghanaian man. Get off your knees, Ghanaian woman. Some of you are on your knees right now looking at this and says, no, not my Jesus. No way. 
God says, if you worship, look at this, look at this, look at this, unbelievable. I guarantee you, she, she would even kiss the feet of her black husband. She <laughs> would even wash her, the, the feet of her black husband, but yeah. she's kissing the feet of a statue of a fake Jesus. I guarantee you, if she can kiss this, this statue, which is idolatry, she'll kiss the feet of the white man as well. Okay. This is the brainwashing. God says, if any man worship the beast and his image, read on. And receive his mark in his forehead. So or, you, take, you take his philosophy in your mind. Come on. Or in his hand. You support his doctrines. Go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. You hear that? You're going to get the same fate as the so-called white man. So you better come out of these churches. Okay, Captain, uh, we are running far behind time, but there are some questions still coming through. But quickly, uh, please, when I ask the question, kindly try to wrap it up so we could uh, beat with the little time that we've been spared with. So I have this question coming through, and the question says, most of your readings you are reading out are not found in the usual day-to-day -day Bibles. Um, there are lots of the chapters... King James Version Bible. Get a King James yes. Version Bible. Yes. So um, the the question says, why is it not? Why is it that your Bible are not out on the market, or if they are out, where do we get one to buy? Um, you can go on Amazon. You can also go on OriginalRoyalty.com, I believe, to um, get Bibles with the Apocrypha. You want the original King James Version Bible oh, with the it. Apocrypha, King okay. James Version. So that's K J V, not okay. N I V. Okay. Then uh, the last but not least question before we finally wrap up is a question from Ameyao. And he says, What about Matthew chapter 15? The woman who met Jesus and she was referred to as a dog. Was yes. she saved? No, she was not saved. All Christ did was heal her daughter. Why? Because of what she said. She acknowledged that she was a dog and she acknowledged that she must eat from the crumbs from her master's table. Mazungu has not done that to you. In, um, in, all, that, in, um, in all realness, I should say, you have been eating the crumbs from Mazungu's table. The white man has not acknowledged that he is the devil that the Bible speaks of, that he is a dog, and you are the Israelites. So don't misquote that scripture and try to save oh, Mzungu. It's not going to happen. Okay? Brothers and sisters, please follow us at www.israelunite.org. www.israelunite.org. Also, IUIC Ghana on Facebook. And IUIC in the classroom on YouTube and on Facebook. That's IUIC Ghana on Facebook. And with that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.